Are we ready? All right. Welcome back to my holiday kitchen. Today is, quote, the best day of the year. <laughs> I have been hearing about it nonstop this morning because today we are making my signature cream of mushroom soup. Which happens to be Brian's favorite food. Better than coffee. Better than steak. On the planet. And if you know Brian at all, that's saying a lot. <laughs> yes, it is. Because it is amazing. <laughs> so, my mom, I have to give props to her. She taught me how to make this. And I have great memories of this soup because every time we were sick... If my mom was able to be home, um, you know, didn't have to work or whatever, you know, what was going on in our life at that time, she would make this for us. And so it's very much a comfort food for me, and it's really great. Now, um, we could argue about whether or not this is healthy. <laughs> I submit, although I'm not the best person to say, <laughs> to say this because people take one look at me and go, yeah, well, <laughs> what do you have to say about it? But um, I submit that whole foods, real foods are healthier than canned food, even if the whole food, real food has more fat. So I'm just saying that as a blanket warning because it's about to get real in here <laughs> with the fat. So um, anyway, but this is what I use for, and the reason I'm making it today for my holiday edition of um, videos is because this is what I use for my green bean casserole. It is also what I use for a bazillion casseroles that I make throughout the year. So it is a staple go-to. I usually have, um, uh, what is the word, Tupperwares full, full of it in eight ounce or 12 ounce Tupperwares frozen in my freezer for different recipes that I make. So this is a really good thing. Um, if you use canned cream of mushroom soup, make this instead. You'll save yourself money. You won't be eating chemicals and all sorts of preservatives. And mostly for me, you won't be eating soy protein, which I'm allergic to. So this is why I make my own. Okay. My pan is, whoo, earlier we made, what? It is also, I don't know what I'm doing here. Did I do something? I might have done something. It is also incredible just to eat without putting it in a casserole. Okay. Yeah, we're having it for dinner tonight. Are we still recording? Yes. Okay. I heard a ding ding. I thought maybe that meant something bad. Okay, earlier I made carrot zymes. Those are currently still... They're an hour and 19 minutes away on their two-hour simmer. Um, and so I said, oh, I'm going to heat my pan up. And I overheated it. I can see it smoking. So this butter is going to be very angry in a minute. But in a, in a pan, a big pan, I will say this too. Because we I make it in batch for uh, freezing and then also because we always eat it the night that we make the green bean casserole um, right before Thanksgiving. <laughs> we eat it for dinner that night. Um, I'm making like two pounds of mushrooms. <laughs> so if you don't want to make quite that much, then just half of half it or whatever. But so two pounds of, of mushrooms. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of soup. So in a really big stock pot, or in this case, a Dutch oven, enamel Dutch oven. Add a half cup of butter. Oh, it's not too angry. I saw it smoking, so I turned it down. And then you can use full butter. I like to do half butter and half bacon lard. But you can use all butter. But anyway, so it's a half cup of of butter and a, roughly a half cup of bacon lard. I just kind of eh, 
That looks like that looks like about the same if you were to ball up butter. Yeah, that's probably about right. It doesn't have to be an exact science. Anyway, and what you're going to do is melt that together. Now, why, the reason I like the bacon lard is because it has a different melting point and so it cooks a little differently. And then it provides a really good, rich flavor to this, to the soup too. So we're going to melt all this fat together. I noticed I was watching, we like to watch cooking shows in our family all together. And we were watching one recently. And I've noticed that instead of saying fat and, and these words like this, they fancify them is what I call it. Make it sound all, I can't think of a good example right now off the top of my head, but I thought that was pretty funny. I'm like, come on people at the end of the day, we all know it's fat. <laughs> Whether you say it or not, it doesn't change. But fat is good, and fat can be delicious. Okay, so that should be pretty close to, to melted. It's definitely melted enough to do this next step, which is here I have, this was a pretty good size onion. I almost didn't fit in my mandolin. So I would say a large onion, diced. Again, if you're doing half of this, um, recipe, just do a medium or half of a large. And we're just going to, what we're going to do, I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit now, um, is we're just going to saute this until the onions start, uh, going brown a little bit or getting translucent. I should guess I really should say, I'm not really looking for brown. I'm looking for translucent. So that might take a couple minutes. Do you want to come back or do you want me to just talk? I can talk. You know, I can talk. What should we talk about? Let's talk about Thanksgiving. Well, Thanksgiving this year is a little bit different for everyone, isn't it? But you know what? I saw the other day, um, one of my friends had posted, I don't do Facebook, but I do do Instagram. And uh, one of my friends had posted something that said uh, something along the lines of, um, in 2020, we're not focused on what we're getting, but we're thankful for what we have. And I think if anything this year has taught any of us, if you've been alive on this planet and not sticking your head in the sand, is just how much we have to be grateful for. Um my son the other night we were talking in our family bible study and he just expressed how glad he is to have family and i think as thanksgiving rolls around and maybe we've had to scale back some of our and by the by the time you're watching this it could even almost be christmas time because <laughs> mama's gonna make these stretch out i'm not doing this every week um but we may have to scale back christmas we may have to scale back Thanksgiving in order to be obedient ultimately to the Lord, but to our magistrates and authorities over us. And if we have to do that, let's just be thankful we still have family, whether it be the family that lives in the same household as you, for us, it's just the three of us, or you live by yourself, but you're able to Zoom someone or, you know, call. We, no matter what, we just have so much to be thankful for. So, okay, enough talking, because now we're ready to cook. You can see now this is turning this beautiful goldeny brown. The onions are getting translucent. And, oh my goodness, I wish you could smell it. Between the zymes, bebopping away over there doing their thing, and this smell, it smells like Thanksgiving. It's so beautiful in here right now. Okay, so to this we're going to add, this is probably about, oh, three probably cloves of chopped garlic. So we're just going to add that. You don't want to put it in too quickly because garlic burns really, really easily. And when it burns, it gets very um, bitter. So we don't want to get it too brown or too burnt. But just give that a minute to 
cook. And then here is our two pounds of coarsely chopped white mushrooms. I've used before when things have been a little bit more, <laughs> I've had extra money or whatever. I've used before baby portobellas. But honestly, I prefer the taste of the white, the cheapo white mushrooms. So it's a lot and you're like, oh my goodness, what in the world? I want you to see how much it is. It's like this pan is almost half full, but mushrooms cook down big time. They got a lot of moisture in them. They're mostly moisture they cook down. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cover this and we're gonna let it cook down to um, when the mushrooms are weepy and cooked through and just the right texture. So I really have no idea how long that is. We're gonna start at about 10, I'm gonna guess 10 to 15 minutes, but when I come back, I will tell you how long it's been. Okay, welcome back to my kitchen. Now, um, it's been about 15 or 20 minutes since I left you with the mushrooms cooking down. And one thing that Brian told me I should make sure I say to you is, you saw how many mushrooms were in the pot and how dry that appeared. And you probably thought like I did the first time I made this, should I add water? No, do not add water. Remember I told you they have a lot of water in them and they will cook down and I wanted to show you. Look at that. Okay, you can see they have cooked way down. They are just full of moisture and this is from me. Like I lift the pot lid quite a bit checking on them, okay? So to this, we're gonna add the rule of thumb that I found anyway, like I said, guys, before I have not gone to culinary art school, but the rule of thumb I found it, or the rule of thumb that I found is work. Is however much fat you use, you use the same amount of flour. So we did a cup of fat. So we're doing a cup of white flour that we're adding to these mushrooms to make our roux. We're just going to get that stirred up really well. And you can see it makes like a, a gummy type pasty looking mass, but that's right. Okay. Now we're going to start adding milk. Okay. My, my, my heat is at a solid medium, which on this burner, this is one of the burners that puts out the most BTUs on my um, stove, so it's it's nice and hot. We're going to start adding milk a little bit at a time and just stirring it in. It takes a lot of milk. Um, I'm not giving you ratios on this next part besides the cup of flour because it is really dependent on what you're using this soup for. If you're using it for um, casseroles, I leave it a little thicker so that it's more, if you're using it for casseroles to freeze, let me put it that way, um, I leave it a little bit thicker so that it's more like concentrate, like canned soup. And then that way when, when your recipe calls for a can of soup and a can of milk, you can just do, you know, the eight ounces or 12 ounces of soup that you have frozen and then add the eight ounces or 12 ounces of milk. Um, when I'm making it to eat and when I'm making it for green bean casserole, because you do normally add milk to the green bean casserole, I just get it to a nice consistency. But I am the type of person that I do not like wimpy watery soups. I like what I have deemed and termed stoops, which is stew and soup mushed together. Stoop. So I like stoops and um, that's what I want to eat is stoops. So I get my 
mushroom soup a little thinner than stoop and then I cook it down a bit okay so that's what we're going for and keeping in mind that right now I'm just using 2% milk I'm two, using 2% 2 milk that is a little bit past its expiration date it is not full on soured but it has it's heading that direction <laughs> and it's got a little bit funny like taste this is a great way to use up that kind of milk. Remember I talked to you earlier about want not, waste not? Um, that's one of the things that I do with milk that is about to expire or it's a little past its expiration is I'll make a, a batch of cream of mushroom or cream of celery soup with it because um, you it's a great way to use it up instead of throwing it away. And normally milk does not even go bad in this household. Um, both Jaden and I are huge milk drinkers, but again, <laughs> and I'm by, by no means am I disparaging Walmart because they, the, the milk they sold me, I buy four gallons at a time because we go through about a gallon a week, um, the two of us, Jaden and I, um, would have been fine if I would have been in control of the dates because I would have picked two that were close to expiring and two that were further out. But they sold me four that were within a week and a half of expiring. So that's why I'm in the predicament I am. So you can see that all I'm doing while I'm talking to you is I'm stirring my soup and adding milk as um, I stir to get like I said, we're going for a little bit thinner than the consistency I want. So I'm just going to do another splash of milk. And then, um, I don't know if I've taught you this trick before, but this is a good trick. Take the ba your finger down the back of the spoon. And it, it drips a little bit, but not much. So I'm actually going to take it a little bit further than that. When you say drips, that line wants to close in? Right. The line wants to... You, thank you, honey. I, I'm not a good communicator, guys. I used to be. But, well, any of you who know me well know why. And any of you who don't know me well don't care. So <laughs> I my brain is heading out of this world it's going to heaven before I am and uh, there's bits and pieces <laughs> it's like styrofoam up there <laughs> okay so let's check again so we're gonna take our finger run it down the back uh, it's, yeah see how it's starting to transgress that line and not hold its shape that's how you check gravy. If gravy holds its shape after you do that, it's ready. That This is the consistency that I want on this soup. So, now that we're here, let's season. And again, I'm not going to give you, I'm just not going to do it. I refuse to give you ratios here because I don't know what your family likes. Um, I know what my family likes. And so you're going to see me season this up and then you can, if you're like, oh, our family doesn't like parsley, let's drop that. You can. This is totally up to you. Um, so what I like to do is I start with a nice pinch of freeze-dried parsley. This is the Lighthouse. They sell it at Costco. And honestly, I just do freeze-dried herbs like this. Like sometimes if I'm doing a fancy, okay, make that two pinches. Sometimes if I'm doing a fancy meal, I'll buy real herbs, like fresh herbs. But honestly, they oftentimes go bad before I can use them all. So I don't always do that. Okay, so two pinches of freeze-dried parsley. If you're using fresh, you'd use a little bit more, okay? Because... This is, of course, concentrated a little bit because the moisture is out. And then even though we did garlic at the beginning, our family loves garlic. 
and um, it's so good for you, especially this time of year, immune system wise. So I do a nice sprinkle on top, just kind of keep the camera on the soup, babe, so they can see how much I'm doing of garlic powder. And then a nice sprinkle on top here of celery salt. I'll be back. I'm going to yell at my dogs. No. Are you recording now? Are you positive? Yes. I can uh. see the numbers counting. <laughs> I'm trusting him. Ugh! Da, da, de, de, da. <laughs> this is paprika. Hungarian paprika. Okay. A nice, good shake of that. What was the last thing you put on? Celery salt. And then I do a pinch of salt and some good grinds of pepper. Zatsu! Stop it! Okay. So, you can already see that this is thickening. It doesn't take long. Um, and that's good. This is a very fast and yummy, I mean, short of the mushrooms cooking down, this is a really fast and easy recipe. So, um, once we get those initial seasonings in, and I have noticed that it just depends a little bit, guys, on your onion, your garlic, your mushrooms. Sometimes it takes more seasoning, sometimes it takes less, and that's partly, too, why I don't want to hem you in to ratios here. Um, so, taste, 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 okay? So, again, with our taster spoon, so we don't contaminate the whole lot. Mm. It's so good, but it does need more salt. Mm. Let's do a little bit more celery salt. It's great on garlic. It's got a nice garlicky, garlicky flavor without being over the top. Um... Let's do some, another pinch of real salt. Okay, I'm going to let the dogs out because they're barking at magpies. Seriously. Ridiculous. They hate magpies. I think my dad has somehow taught them to hate magpies. And I will say, the magpies out here are a nuisance. They're beautiful. Matter of fact, every time we host the MBT boys in the summer, our neighborhood Bible time evangelists from different areas of the country, they're usually college students. They're always like, what are those beautiful black birds with the long tail? And I'm like, oh, the black and white ones? Magpies. They've never seen them before. They think they're the most gorgeous birds. I'm like, yeah, well, they like to eat strawberries. They're really smart, so they can know how to skirt around little things that you try to prevent them from eating your strawberries. I feel a little bit like Mr. McGregor when it comes to the magpies around here. Okay, so I'm going to have Brian taste this too, because he, he helps me achieve the right flavor. I know what I think it needs, but I'm going to see if you say the same thing. It needs a little paprika. And I think just a titch more regular salt. Yeah. Not, not celery. Yeah, you're still getting a little bit too much of the garlic. So, I mean, it takes, I would say we've probably been up to two teaspoons of paprika. 
probably a teaspoon and a half of salt. But again, we're talking about, it was almost three quarters of a gallon of milk, two pounds of mushrooms, a whole onion, a cup of flour. So it sounds like a lot of salt and stuff, but really, I mean, this pan is huge. You don't realize how big it is until you start putting away all the soup and then you're like, holy cannoli, which brings me to something that I wanted to tell you guys. You're probably watching me make this soup going, okay, but okay, I would like to know how you make that into green bean casserole. <gasps> Cause I'm going to show you. I am going to show you in another video. So we're going to head that direction here in just a minute. This time, make sure I get a mushroom. Oh my goodness. I think that is perfect. But we'll see what you think. And I'm going to blow on it this time for you because it's getting super hot. Now remember, Bryce, I'm going to put in a splash of heavy cream. So if you think it needs just a little bit more of something to combat that, you need to tell me, okay? Do you think it needs anything more to combat the cream? It's no. only a splash. No, it's perfect. I okay. Think. Don't you? Yes. And I'm going to tell you guys, you can just stay there. I'll come back to you. Just take a look at my, I don't know, my cinnamon rolls raising on the... <laughs> See them? Those are going to be for dinner. Because when you cook for Thanksgiving, why not eat cream of mushroom soup and cinnamon rolls for dinner? Amen. Really? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to put a splash. And when I say a splash, I literally mean boop, a splash of the heavy cream in. Okay, it doesn't take much. It's just, it just adds a little bit of richness. Um, but you don't want to thin it out and you definitely don't want to lose your seasoning that you've... And the reason I don't add the cream earlier, you ask, um, cream can get funny if you cook it too long. I've noticed in soup. So I like to just add it at the end. Do you have something that I, you need me to say to you? No, that, my eye was itching. Oh. Mm. But you can taste every aspect of this. You can taste the onion. You can taste the butter. You can taste the bacon grease. You can taste um, the mushrooms, the celery salt. I mean, it just is so delicious. I wish you guys could taste it. That's it. Okay. So there you guys go. We got a nice hot pot of cream of mushroom soup. Um, I just turn it off. I'm going to let it cool just in the pot for just a second because I'm going to have you guys back here in a minute to put together our green bean casseroles for Thanksgiving. Um, but other than that, I don't think I've forgotten to say anything. So on that note, I will just say to you that I love you. We love you. God definitely loves you. And God has got this.